Hello everybody, MD Polo here at Range USA. I've got the range to myself this morning, so thank you very much to Range USA here in Carmel for allowing me to do this. And today we're gonna to take some first shots with a Beretta 92 FS Inox Ghost. I've been looking for one of these for quite some time. Finally, a friend of mine sold me his, and I've always loved the 92 series. I actually learned how to shoot with a Beretta 92. I've got a video on that. So we're gonna take some first shots and show you how it goes. We are shooting SNB, and it is of course nine millimeter, 124 grain. See how we do. Pull that one. That's me all over the place. Good. I'm about 10 minutes out. Wow. Very soft shooter. And we are empty. The gun is 100% stock and very, very smooth shooting. Let's bring you in. Good or bad, you see what I do. So there it is, first shots. Oops. With the Beretta. Ninety two FS Inox. Let's go to the tabletop. Today we're going to take a look at a Beretta ninety two FS, but this one is special. It's not going to be a long video because I'm going to assume, rightly or wrongly so, that most of you are familiar with a Beretta ninety two and the model the ninety two FS. What makes this one special is that not only it's a 92FS made in Italy, but is the Inox Ghost. And what makes it the Ghost model is that as you can see, everything is white, stainless. There are no black parts on it, the trigger shoe, none of the controls, everything is in stainless steel without any black colors anywhere. And thus, the nickname Ghost. Now, the Inox are kind of difficult to find, not too many made, and the Ghost model is even more rare than the regular Inox. Normally, you'll find them with black rubber grips, and this came with the wood grips. And as you can see here, they have the medallion in the middle with PB for Pietro Beretta. So I think that with a wood grips, it looks very nice. And as you can see, it's a stainless steel slide and it says Beretta made in Italy. Stainless steel slide. It's got an alloy frame and everything else is stainless steel. So I've been looking for one of these for quite some time. And finally, a friend of mine sold me his and I was uh, very grateful for that. The other thing I want to do is show you that there are different grips available for this Beretta. And I'm going to show you a couple of grips and then we're going to do uh, some detailed look at the handgun itself. All right. So here you can see the grips that came with it, the wood grips with a medallion. And if I flip it around, you can also show you if I could speak as well. Let me remove the mag. And while I do that, it comes with two stainless, I mean steel mags that have the aluminum base plate to match the gun as the ghost. So not even the base plate is black. So going back to the gun, if you flip it around, I've removed the other panel. 
you can see how it works on the in inside. Here's the trigger bar, bar. And I've got a couple of sets of grips and I wanted your opinion, which one do you think it looks best? Whether it is the wood grip, let me pop the screws out of this one, whether it is the wood grip panel, like it came, or I have this set of grips and this, as you can see, is real alligator skin. They're gonna last forever and I think they look absolutely spectacular in this Beretta. Now imagine this got nice quality screws in here, so ignore that. But look at that. It is absolutely spectacular with these alligator grips. It makes it a little bit thicker, as you can see there. So the Beretta is a thick gun as is, and the alligator skin is gonna make it even thicker but I think they look spectacular. I made a video before, but these came from Brownworks. And he is just an artist. Makes them all by hand, all in-house, and that's the other panel. They're just spectacular. And whatever you want him to do, just tell him and he'll do it for you. He is just amazing and this alligator grips I think look fantastic. So that's one option that you can consider. The other option is coming from my friends over at Lock Grips. They've been a longtime supporter of the channel and I feature their products many times. And what we have here is the Brass Heavy. They've been Cerakoted black but these are the Brass Heavy grips. And I also think they look spectacular on the Beretta. It increases the weight of the 92FS quite a bit and they are very thin. As you can see here, much thinner than the Brownworks alligator grips, maybe a little bit thinner than the wood grips, but they add quite a bit of weight. It doesn't necessarily work for concealed carry, but when you take it to the range, it really makes a big difference. You can really tell the difference. So you can get these in the, in the raw brass, brass color, or you can get them Cerakoted different colors. So that was the black. And then along the same line, also from lock grips, is going to be this purple uh, aluminum. It's not heavy, the heavy brass, like, like the one on camera left, but they are very nice aluminum. And I got them on purple, in purple, because purple is my little girl's favorite color. So I thought she would get a kick out of seeing this in purple. So that's the way it looks. So what do you guys think? If you can let me know in the comments section, would you keep it with a purple from Lock, just the regular aluminum grips? Would you put the heavy brass Cerakoted in, back, in black from Lock grips? Would you use the alligator one, alligator skin from Brownworks? Or would you keep the one it came with, with the wood grips? What say you? What, are you? what is your choice? Which one do you think looks the best? So please let me know in the comments section. The other thing is, and the gun is clear, the trigger pull on this gun is very, very smooth. And it was clear prior to, but let's just double check. Double action, single action with slide mounted safety. Okay, it's got a slide stop right here and the takedown lever right there. And as, as I mentioned earlier, everything is in stainless steel. The double action pull is gonna be a solid eight and a half pushing on nine pounds. And I normally don't dry fire a hammer fired gun, you know, without having a um, dummy round in there. But just for the purposes of the video, 
it is a very stout pull and then it just keeps going and rolls into the brake and then the single action is going to be there it's not very tactile you can feel it but it's not going to be a big push a little bit of creep back to the wall and a very smooth five pound pull so it's a very good trigger the one challenge that I have with guns like this, with guns like uh, the CZs, any hammer-fired CZs, is that I have medium-sized hands, and that's just the way it is. And when it's in double action, I normally have difficulty. Right now, it's easier because it doesn't have the other panel on, and it's a lot easier for me to reach the trigger shoe. But even with these, with these grips, in double action, it is a challenge for me to correctly, at least for me, for my way of shooting, to reach the trigger shoe in double action so I can accurately and, cor and correctly place my finger in the shoe for the first pull. People, so I don't feel comfortable as a defense, using this to as a home defense gun, as a concealed carry gun, because it is, I don't feel confident that I can accurately place that first shot under stress with double action the way this fits my hand, if that makes sense to you. So I cannot, you see, now it's got the safety there. It doesn't bring the hammer back, but now the hammer's back. I can put it on save and it disables the trigger okay so i can't carry it cocked and locked it's not that type of of system and for me it's just too long of a trigger pull on in double action and people say well yeah but once you fire that first shot it goes into single action the trigger reaches easier and now you're ready to go well you may not get a second shot and the first shot is the one that most of the time the first shot is the one that counts so I, I need to feel comfortable with that if it's double action that I can reach. For example, my other Beretta, the PX4 Storm, I got the compact carry model from Langdon. That is also double action, single action, but I can reach the trigger perfectly fine. In that first shot in double action with that gun, it is so smooth. I have no issues whatsoever. I love that gun and I carry it often. One of my all time favorite carry guns. But with a 92 series with the FS, I just can't get there comfortably. That is my main concern with this, with this handgun in particular. So I don't carry it. I take it to the range once in a while, have a little fun with it, um, but that's it. It's not a home defense gun and it's not a carry gun for the reasons I pointed. If it works for you, you got longer hands, longer fingers, I mean, um, if it works for you, that's fantastic because it is a great, great gun that is going to last your lifetime. Some people have said that they've had issues with some of the Berettas and especially when they purchase a used one where they've experienced some rust in the frame. And as you can see, this one has been very nicely cared for and loved and it has zero issues with this one. So there it is. Just wanted to show you the Beretta 92 FS, and this is the Inox Gold, I mean Inox Ghost, sorry about that. And just showing you around, you can see how it is ambi, ambi on the safety side, and the mag release is on the left side, but it is swappable, you can bring it around. You see the sights. You can see the difference in the configuration of the safeties from the sa from the left side to the right side. They're different sizes. And how the, ca the hammer, it is textured and skeletonized. So overall, a fantastic, fantastic firearm. So I don't want to keep this video to make this video very long. What are your thoughts on the Beretta 92FS Inox Ghost? I look forward to hearing your comments. And also tell me, which grip did you like the most? I'd like to thank Brownworks very much for sending in these beautiful alligator skin grips and to lock grips.
for sending both the heavy brass in Cerakote Black and the purple to make my little girl happy. I look forward to your comments. Let me know what you think. Please remember that I upload videos every Friday morning and when I can on Wednesday mornings as well. I'm still posting on Instagram even though they continue to censor in ways that make me very angry. So I'm starting to post more and more over on uh, Twitter, I guess X we should call it now. So if you can give me a follow there and help me grow Twitter, that would be very, very helpful. We're on our way to 20,000 here on YouTube and I appreciate your support as always. Thank you very much for stopping by and until the next time, God bless.